Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, Shaggy Hislop, Ali Moreno and Stevie Nickel alongside me. A little later on in the program, Gab Marcotti will be joining us to discuss another poor performance from Barcelona, plus a bit of Balotelli talk as well. But we start with the FA Cup. Uh, of course, we saw a full round of action this weekend. Stevie, what jumped out at you? Is it Lincoln? Absolutely. Yeah, I've, it's a great story. It's a fairy tale. It's certainly a nightmare for Burnley. But there is no way that a Premier League side, regardless of whether they make changes or not, should lose to a non-league team at home. I, I find that embarrassing. And Burnley should be embarrassed. You don't find it romantic? No, mm. no, no. Nothing romantic about it. Well, They're mm. a non-league side. Mm. I've played in non-league. And the majority of guys cannot do the basics. So if Burnley, who are supposed to be in the Premier League, one of, one of the, or arguably the best league in the world can't be a non-league team. Come on, that's an embarrassment. Jack, what was your big takeaway from the well, FA Cup this week? you know how strongly I feel about the FA Cup. I, I love the FA Cup. Yep. I play in this competition. I, I appreciate everything that it stands for. But when Huddersfield, who was sitting third in the championship, with a chance of getting to the quarter-final round, makes seven changes in their game against Manchester City, it tells a story that it's not just the Premier League clubs who are using their squad depths to, in an effort to get French players' games against lower league opposition. A championship club makes seven changes. It, the problems run far deeper than, than just the Premier League or the issues that, that the so-called big clubs may have with, with this competition. And it's, it's, it's taking away from, from what is otherwise, uh, or has been, a fantastic tournament through the years. I know these guys have connections to the FA Cup. They played in it, it means something to them. It doesn't mean much to me. And I understand the story behind Lincoln City and how great that is for that club and for those fans and for those players and how meaningful it is. But that means that in my life, I now have to deal with a little bit more of Lincoln City. <laughs> that does nothing for me and the competition. And it does nothing for the neutral because to be quite honest with you, it was hard enough to get up and watch Lincoln City against Burnley. Now Lincoln City potentially against Sutton United, if they're able to get past Arsenal, which uh, I know yeah. is a long shot, and it wouldn't happen, but what if it did? So the more we think that this is romantic and magical, that these teams are advancing, the more that we are tied up to watching Millwall and Huddersfield and Lincoln City and Sutton United, and the more that the competition loses any sort of validity or interest for the neutral. As you mentioned, the draw was made. It will be Sutton United or Arsenal against Lincoln City. Spurs will take on Millwall. It's Middlesbrough against Huddersfield or Manchester City. And the big one is Chelsea against Manchester United. As you were then at the top of La Liga after this weekend's matches, Real Madrid with a comfortable 2-0 victory over Espanyol. Gareth Bale back and scoring. Meanwhile, Barcelona again struggling. Leganes left it late. A Lionel Messi penalty giving them a 2-1 win. This did nothing, though, to silence the critics of late. The front page of Mundo Deportivo summing it up quite nicely, really. Oof. Meanwhile, sport. What's that, Ali? Well, there is life, there is hope. Wow, the cl <laughs> clutching at straws, really, because you look at this, one point separates the two teams at the top, but as it stands, it could be 100. The golf in quality is amazing. It is, and there is no denying that Barcelona has had a difficult week. They were destroyed by PSG in the midweek, and they were not good today against Leganes. What I would take issue with, if I were a Barcelona player, would be the fans of the Camp Nou. There were two things that happened today at the Camp Nou. There was silence, and then there were booing. And that's it. The support for the players wasn't quite there. The booing on Luis Enrique was clear. And I, I, it's fine. If you're, if you're a fan, you're entitled to boo if that's what you want to do. But when you've been spoiled with success over the course of many years now by this group of players, this is the moment when you need to support the team. This is the moment when you need to show up as a fan because now the team needs you. The team is struggling. Yes, there is no confidence in the group. Now would be a good time to get behind the group. Instead, what you get is booing for a team that has provided these fans with so much success. Good theory, that, isn't it? Good theory. Get behind your team when it's not doing well. When you've been fed New York strip and then somebody, mm -hmm. somebody throws... Careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not not New, New York, York strip. Yeah. Mince meat, you're going to say, well, you know what? 
The last three years I've had New York strip. I'm just going to eat this minced meat anyway. Yeah. Here we go, I'll get stuck in. It just doesn't happen. It's a great theory. It would be lovely if that's how it worked. But when you've been fed what they've been fed, you begin to expect it. And when you don't get it, then you're not going to be happy. So do I like fans booing the team? No. Can you be surprised? Absolutely not. Yeah, here's my issue with Barcelona. Um, eight days ago, they go away to Alaves, win 6-0. Yes. Real Madrid respond. They, they win, but it wasn't a great performance that even Zinedine Zidane had to comment on. You then find yourself a point behind Real Madrid and a no. Real had two games in hand. But if at any point over the last three months, ever since Real went on this run, that you're smelling blood in the water, it is now. You're playing well. Real limp against bottom of the table lost sooner, and you follow that up with that performance against PSG, and then this today, it, it, it says that there are bigger problems for Barcelona than simply Iniesta being past his best. Well, yeah, and I would, I, sorry, Dan, I would also say you only had to see the reaction or lack thereof by Messi after he scores his penalty to understand that mm. there are issues in this club that go beyond what we are able to see. Is it the beard? I don't think it's a beer. <laughs> it's a nice looking beer. It's, 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 it's solid. It's, a, it's solid. It's so platinum Gav, blonde look, again. I said on Friday, I said, look, this is the perfect remedy for Barcelona. After what happened in Paris, you, you're at home, you're against Leganes, who are rubbish. You know, this is exactly what Luis Enrique would have wished for. Yet they come out and they put in such a poor performance. What's your theory on it? Well, and they put in a bad performance, and according to Ali, then, uh, you're not supposed to boo them because that might upset them further, and in fact, you need to get behind them. I mean, it, those fans were, were booing because they're not happy, because while they blame Luis Enrique, who's been front and center and said, I take responsibility for everything, there's a portion of that fan base who blames the players, who see a very distinct lack of effort. Uh, in this game today, frankly, other than Ter Stegen and, and Neymar, uh, Everybody else pretty much played badly. Mm. And, uh, and, and I think there are some fans, paying customers, who, who have been there all along and say, you know what, we would rather see effort and bad results than, than what we perceive to be lack of effort. Obviously, there's broader issues from Luis Enrique's contract to, to the way they're, they're playing back to front, bypassing the midfield to get the ball to front three, all these things that, that people have talked about. But I, I personally have no problem whatsoever uh, in the fans taking it out uh, on the players as well as the manager. It's what clearly, uh, clearly, Gab, you didn't hear me when I said that I have no problem with fans booing, that they have the right to do that. But what I do suggest is that when you've had the sort of success that Barcelona has had over many years, including this group of players that won the treble two years ago, that won two titles last year, that at some point you have to have the perspective of saying, Maybe this is the time where we need to support rather than pinpoint the fact that, yes, the team was destroyed by PSG. We all saw it. We all knew it. But at some point, somebody has to have perspective and understand that that level of success is unsustainable, even for a club like Barcelona. Yeah, okay. All right. Hey, Ali, well, what are you going to support? Well, what, if you, what if perhaps, uh, and I'm just throwing this out there, you're one of those people who thinks that, you know what, uh, between Messi not signing his contract between other people making comments about Luis Enrique, what if you actually want to send the message that you're blaming the players for, for basically quitting on their manager and, uh, and, and you're blaming them for undermining Luis Enrique at this stage of the season? Luis Enrique, who has certainly made mistakes, but has taken everything on his shoulders onto this point. And you're saying, no, you're all going to go down together if you're going to go down. And we're not going to go out there and cheer you on because you, you beat the, 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 this ridiculous Leganes team 2-1 and act like everything's fine um, because you're not doing a shift for the manager. I think there's a, there's a portion of the Barcelona support who certainly feels that way. So you don't think that there's enough equity built with this group to buy themselves some time? Is that what you're suggesting, that their level of success that they've had doesn't buy them any time? So a bad week is game set match for this version of Barcelona. Yeah, I don't know what equity Andre Golmes has, frankly, uh, at this club. I didn't see him running out there in the double or the treble, or indeed some of these other players who've been out there. I don't see Sergio Roberto playing a fundamental part when they went and they won the treble. Um, and also, uh, there's nothing worse from a fan's perspective of when you start thinking that there are people who aren't performing for the manager. And, and again, it's not my theory, 
but there is a portion of the support at the camp now who feels that way, and, and they want shared responsibility, not everything dumped on Luis Enrique's head, the way some local media have been doing. Meanwhile, after the victory for PSG over Barca midweek, it looks set to be a near perfect week for their supporters after Monaco, who of course hit the top of the French standings, can only manage a draw against Bastia. Everyone was expecting PSG to then beat Toulouse, but they could only manage a goalless draw, meaning it's as you were at the top. Three points still separate Monaco and PSG. Nice have joined them. We'll talk about Nice in a moment, Gab, but what happened here? PSG was so brilliant against Barca, you thought, right, momentum. They are going to kill to lose, close that gap on Monaco to one point, and it just didn't happen. Yeah, there's definitely no such thing as, uh, as momentum. Uh, I had a bunch of theories out there. One, that they expended so much mental and physical energy uh, against Barcelona that they, they, they sort of uh, uh, took this game for granted. Um, portion of, of bad luck, I think, as well and maybe one or two decisions going against them. Uh, but there's no question. You know, you cannot be happy. Unai Emery cannot be happy uh, because this is how you end up throwing away leagues. Uh, meanwhile, Nice with a victory, with a big talking point was Mario Balotelli, who L'Equipe gives marks, L'Equipe, the big sports newspaper in France, out of 10. Since they started it back in the 90s, <laughs> only 10 people have got one out of 10. Make that 11 now. <laughs> Mario Balotelli, who got sent off in the second half. That's his third red card um, whilst playing for Nice. It, it is embarrassing. It's extraordinary how, once again, Mario Balotelli, we thought, Gab, had found his niche, didn't we? We thought he was there at Nice. He'd find his ground after that nightmare at Liverpool. But it has gone terribly wrong once again for the Italian striker. I should say, in fairness to Balotelli, it's three red cards, but one of them was rescinded. Uh, look, all I can say is, all I can say about this performance is that I wonder if he hadn't been sent off, he could have been on the pitch longer, and he might have been able to get a score even lower than a one. Uh, that is how poor his performance was on this day. This is you take the worst of Mario Balotelli, you condense it into 68 minutes or however long he was on the pitch. And, uh, and you have this, this performance. Uh, it, it's amazing. It's like he's undoing all the good work of the first two, three months of the season. Uh, he was unhappy uh, out there. He was, he, was, he was having words with his teammates. He wasn't pressing. He wasn't running. Uh, his teammates not happy with him. He probably wouldn't even have started this game if not for, uh, for injuries elsewhere. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you can only hope that he looks at this and says, uh-oh, I've done it again. Why always me? And then he sort of remembers what he was like in uh, in september yeah i'm sure history shows he will definitely do that uh, his <laughs> former club manchester city of course take on monaco in the champions league this week the sbi has got city as 68 percent favorites i don't really want to talk about the game too much gab but how, much, how excited are you about the prospects of these two going head to head um i i'm i'm intrigued i'm really intrigued by what uh, by what monaco have, have done this season uh, with the free scoring, some of the, the young talent from, uh, um, from, from Drawery to obviously Bernardo Silva uh, to seeing Falcao banging them in again. Uh, and I think it's going to be a real test for, for a city. There's no question where, where Pep Guardiola's priorities lie. When you look at the, uh, the number of players, he, he rested uh, in the FA Cup at the weekend against Huddersfield. And his reward for that, of course, is a replay. Uh, from Monaco's perspective, you know, they played the game Friday. They've been preparing for this. They're totally G'd up. Meanwhile, in Serie A, Gab, it's as you were at the top of the table. Juventus, of course, with that victory over Palermo. Roma beating Torino. Napoli uh, as well winning away. Uh, what's your big takeaway from the weekend? Well, obviously, uh, as you said, it's, it's as you were at the top. Uh, but Ed Dzeko scoring again. He's now 29 goals on the season. Wow. Uh, that's an enormous amount. amount. Uh, in Spalletti's system, he is completely thriving. Uh, Gabby Gall finally got on the score sheet for, for Inter. We've been waiting for this for a very, very long time. Uh, Gerard De Lofeo coming up really big uh, for Milan, taking on Fiorentina. That was a game where, where really the, the loser would have to give up whatever Europa League dreams he might have had. And yes, some people do dream of the uh, Europa League. De Lofeo has been an absolute revelation uh, for Milan. And he mm -hmm. knew the talent was inside him somewhere, but he's certainly displaying it. And uh, finally, uh, Zdenek Piscara, great story. 
They hadn't actually won a game all season. Their only victory was because their opponents forfeited. Uh, they bring back their legendary coach, Stan Examen, the man who got them to City A four years ago. And uh, what does he do week one? Hey, how about this? A 5-0 victory over Genoa. Uh, the man really is magical. Great stuff, Gab, as always. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Just a reminder, if you ever miss a show, fear not, you can download the audio version over on ESPNFC.com. Let's head to Germany. Hertha Berlin taking on Bayern Munich. Bayern, of course, coming into this match off the back of their 5-1 thrashing of Arsenal. Big favourites taking on Hertha Berlin, who are currently sixth in the table. 21 minutes into this one, though. A free kick awarded on the far oh. side. Is, is, this a, is this a dive? Uh, I'm going straight to Ali, Steve. You don't mind. Yeah. Uh, Marvin Plattenhar from Tegucigalpa. <laughs> <laughs> Another Latin player diving. And from the resulting free kick, it's 1-0. Oh, oh. Ibisevic at the near post. It's a nice finish by Ibisevic. A good service in by Plattenhar, by the way. Now, take a look at this. 96th minute. Bayern Munich with literally the last kick of the net game find the back of the net. Lewandowski making it 1-1. I think they call us justice, right? Oh. Well, maybe. Well, mm. well. Yeah. well it wasn't a free kick that he scored off. Hey, so. really, Alonso. Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> You're a beauty. Really asked him. He's had his nails out. So, Vinicius, so Hertha Berlin 1, Bayern Munich 1. Uh, this is what Langkamp, Hertha Berlin's defender, had to say about added time. It's probably an unwritten rule that nobody can win against them. Uh, meanwhile, their coach said, unfortunately, there was so much stoppage time. That is the Bayern bonus. After five minutes, the whistle should be blown. Should it have been blown, Gab? Uh, no. I mean, <laughs> the, the game ends uh, under the current system we have with a running clock. The game ends when the referee decides the game ends. And the fact of the matter is, when they say, when, when the fourth official holds up the board, uh, he says a minimum of five minutes uh, at a time. And in this case, uh, there were two substitutions, uh, two substitutions by Hertha Berlin, I might add. Uh, and the rule of thumb is to add 30 seconds for each substitution. Uh, so that would take you up to 96 minutes. And that's without counting whatever time the referee wants to add on for time wasting and messing around uh, during the time added on, of which there was plenty. Yeah, Hertha certainly made the most of it, didn't they? No question about it. And I think... Uh, you know, look, <laughs> this is the way the rules are now. We've had the running clock debate. Um, uh -oh. I'm in the minority uh -oh. here, so I won't no. bring it up again. <laughs> uh, but, but, but the way the way the rules are, uh, you know, it's pretty clear. And then they can call it Bayern bonus. Back in England, uh, we used to call it Fergie time. Mm. But, but the reality is, uh, is that that this is what the rules say. More of a concern for Bayern, I think is the fact that uh, despite the dubious free kick for the opening goal and everything, uh, they did not play particularly well and looked uh, almost hung over by that 5-1 uh, drubbing of Arsenal in midweek. Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison, here to tell you Geico has more than just great savings. Much more. Geico's been around for more than 75 years, back when they were using Morse code. Sorry, that's just my sense of humor. What's more, with Geico, you get 24-7 access to licensed agents on the app, online, or over the phone, so you can talk to them at night or in the morning. So forevermore, just know that no other auto insurer has more more than Geico. More power to you. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Craig Burley, oh reading some mean tweets. Okay, we're going to have some fun with some tweets because, as you know, we shouldn't take ourselves too serious in this job. Most people do. Uh, they know who they are. How dare you label Arsenal fans spineless? That's off the back of something I did a week ago. You have absolutely no right and no clue. Completely ignorant and highly offensive. Oh, that was a bit disappointing. I'm always amazed how those who excelled in mediocrity... I think he's talking about the lads behind. Feel they can criticise the successful one, Piers Morgan. Oh, I don't just get off. Didn't even make sense. Lazy ex-players. Well, I'm not lazy. Hide in the studio. I'm not hiding. I'm not. If you hide in the studio, you're actually hiding behind something. Hide in the studio and claim they are experts. Mr. Burley, go into management and prove all this expertise. Well, pay me eight million. I'll go into management like Wenger. Arsene Wenger's clip toenails. <laughs> I've seen more success than Craig Burley, Charlie Adam, Chris Sutton and Danny Mills. What have they got to do with it? Oh, they must have been 
they must have been critical as well. So his clip toenails have had more success than all of us. Yeah, right. That makes sense, doesn't it? You are irrelevant. Do you have a weight problem, Humpty Dumpty? <laughs> uh, do you have a weight problem, lads? Do you? No. No. Well, I have to say, I thought I, I think I carry it quite well because I'm six foot one. But when the camera gets me at the wrong angle in the studio, I do have a couple of extra layers on my chin. But uh, I'm not quite at Steve Nichols level. Did you ever win the league, pal, or get lost? No, I didn't. Oh, I did. I'll go back to that. I did in Scotland. And, and back then, it was quite good Scottish football. Not like now. So I did. So shut up. Mate, you're an absolute joke. See, I can make me my glasses here. With your anti-United bias... Oh, God, it's United now. Anti-United bias at ESPN FC. Your panel's anti-United bias is sickening. Oh, my God, how paranoid is that? So, that's anti-United, anti-Arsenal, anti-Chelsea, anti-Liverpool, anti-everybody. That's just a few of the tweets we get. We'll have some fun with it. We don't take it too serious, and we might have some more for you next week. Humpty Dumpty will, of course, be with us on the next edition of ESPN FC. We'll be looking back at Sutton United against Arsenal. I'm going to push him off the wall as well. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly fell off. Guaranteed. He nearly fell, didn't he? You get a chance. Any chance for Sutton? None whatsoever. You're giving them nothing. If, if, if Sutton knock Arsenal out of the FA Cup, then not only Wenger has to go, but the rest of the players, they start again. <laughs> I, I'm, seriously it was bad enough Burnley lost to Lincoln great story great great FA Cup tale but it just shouldn't happen I mean to me it's actually embarrassing selfishly all I want is for the second string goalkeeper for Southern United to get on the field oh, that's all I want <laughs> that's all I need in my life uh, that's all I want that's a good show that'd be great <laughs> that's all I need from this match anything else that's what he match. wants as well to be honest. <laughs> sure. any chance Shaq no better not be that's a not. That's very aggressive. Oh, no, I'm just mm. saying. I'm just saying. For all the criticism we've leveled at Arsenal, you can't, under any circumstance, be losing to. What seven. about the romance? The magic. Well, <laughs> leave that for a Lincoln next round or somebody else. Lincoln but. Sutton United quarter final it would be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what you're trying to do. That. That's, <laughs> that's too much romance <laughs> uh, for me to handle. It. Thank you very much, and of course we're discussing that on the I'm next edition home. of ESPN FC. Me too. Uh, thanks to Shaka and to Ali. I think we're all going home, Shaq. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Stevie. Until next time, goodbye. Welcome to Extra Time. Thank you for your tweets. Manchester United still in all three cups and in fight for fourth place. Yet, why do people, i.e. Shaka Hislop, uh -huh. still criticise Mourinho? Well, he doesn't like him, does he? When, no, I, no, when no, last no, have no. I criticised uh, Mourinho? Hey, he loves Mourinho. Remember when that last interview? Have, hold on. When last have I criticised Mourinho? I don't know. You've been quite nice to United recently. Yeah. yeah. I didn't say they're going to finish top four. Oh, he's going high. Who's that? <laughs> Ahmed. <laughs> Ahmed. Never mind. Oh. oh. What? What? Oh. what? The look away. I'm gonna the look out. away. I'm going to step back from the ledge. Oh. Ahmed Restraint. got me to the edge. Restraint. I'm going to step back. I thought you didn't like Mourinho. Huh? I thought you didn't like me. I love me, Marie. Is the Liverpool key... Oh, it's, it's a double barrel question. Oh. Is the Liverpool keeper's job now Mignolet's for the rest of the season? Uh, until he is a run against where he's complete and utter rubbish, yes. Uh, Gab, <laughs> let's... That's how he got the job, by the way. Gab, out of interest, if Leicester go down, is that good or bad for book sales for your Ranieri book? Uh, <laughs> it's probably not going to be good. What will be good is uh, when Leicester win the Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that. I don't, I don't mean to laugh, Gab. But, uh, okay. Wow. Woo! Uh, can Leicester stay up? Who are you asking? I'll start I Gab. don't know. Everyone's the answer. Oh, yeah. I can, but... You're asking me? Of course they can stay up. They're not in the... Hey! Look at the table. Oh, See that line at the bottom? Places 18, 19, and 20. That's the relegation zone. Leicester are not in the relegation zone. Not what yet, anyway. What about the fourth table, Gab? Oh, they're at the bottom of that. <laughs> they're at the bottom of that. <laughs> oh, there you go. The fourth table is irrelevant. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 you're seeing that this time next week. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> He told you. Hey. Guess who they're playing? Uh, hey. <laughs>
Is that Liverpool? Is that Liverpool? <laughs> <laughs> After Leicester City crushed Liverpool's top four dreams. Oh, oh man. Oh. I think so. oh. Liverpool. Is that a battle that. of the books? <laughs> Leicester Liverpool. Oh, yes, you've it's got five titles of cricket yeah. and crisps against Battle Ranieri. of the books. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Wow. Mm. We we'll see whose book yeah. is better now. Yeah. 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 Gad been, God been right Stevie's book. <laughs> Somebody's going to be lighting the fire over there, is it? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much Stevie knows about his own book. Uh, All book. <laughs> finally, Gab, what's the deal with airline food? <laughs> well, the increasing to the trend of late in uh, short haul airlines have of course, has of course been to uh, provide uh, basically a sales service where you purchase your own food on board uh, and really uh, a preferred option for many travelers is actually to go and find uh, a local uh, fast food outlet or need a healthier outlet in the airport terminal but airside before you board uh, the, the airplane and thereby bringing your own food on board oh, yeah. uh, and I think certainly that's a trend that's going to continue. Still another book, <laughs> yeah, The analysis <laughs> of <laughs> airline merchandise. What will travel with Gabbroco? I might I got, I take that. Hey, by Bourdain. the way, a hey. guide to airport cuisine. <laughs> hey, this time next year, you can take Ranieri with you. <laughs> 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 Do the day. Oh. <laughs> 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 you could do one with Burley, but they've already done an idiot abroad. Six PM Eastern on ESPN News.